Welcome to a more relaxing session. We did a lot of calculations in the previous sessions. We found a critical part of the project, but there is still some work to do. As I mentioned at the end of this last session, we defined the critical part based on the zero slack. Now we will define the critical part, how it really should be determined. We will have a look at the importance of the critical part and the near critical part, and we will do some other calculations of the critical part using the duration of the different paths through the network. The same type of calculations we will use to determine the slack or float of all the activities. Let's first have a look at the definition of the critical path. When we consider that the critical path has a slack equal to zero, that may be misleading in certain conditions. Just imagine that instead of having 14 days to complete the project, we have 17 days. So the late finish of the project would not be equal to April the 15th, but April the 17th. If we would calculate back, we would find that the lowest slack or float would be equal to 2. There will be no part with slack or float equal to 0. We may falsely conclude there is no critical part. On the other hand, imagine that instead of having time till April the 15th, we only have time till April the 12th. When we would calculate back from the April 12th, we will have some activities with float equal to zero, but we will also have activities with a negative float. Again, defining the critical part as the part or the sequence of activities where the float is zero would lead us to conclude that we have a critical part, but we would select the wrong critical part. Every project has at least one critical part. In case your conclusion would be that there is no critical part in your project, then you did something wrong. In the worst case, all paths may be critical. So in our project we have five paths. Well, in the worst case, we can have five critical paths. Now, when we did a calculation and we identified the critical path, we also could conclude that the duration of the critical path is the shortest duration of the project is the shortest time possible to complete the project. Now, the last thing on this slide is to give you the correct and only correct definition of the critical path. And that definition is the critical path is the longest path through the network. When we calculate the duration of all the paths, that one path or more paths, in case some durations are equal, that one path, which is the longest, will be the critical path of your project. Now, why is the critical path important and why do we have to pay attention to the near critical path? The activities on the critical path have no flexibility. Changing the duration of the activities which are on the critical path will change the duration of the critical path and, of course, the duration of the project. The near critical path. What is the near critical path? Well, 
we may have some paths which are close to the duration of the critical path. Those paths are also very important because during the execution of the project or when we are applying some methods to reduce the duration of the project, these near critical paths can become critical. During execu execution, we may have what we call path convergence. So when paths are moving closer to each other, we may end up with more critical paths or in some cases even the critical path can change. Critical path and near critical path are very important if you want to manage your project execution properly. Now let's have a look at an alternative way to calculate the critical path and the slack of the activities. Let's consider four steps. Step number one, identify all the paths through the network. We already did that in one of the previous sessions, so we will reuse that information. Step number two is we will calculate the duration of all these paths. And step three, we can identify the critical path by identifying the longest path of the paths through the network. And then we can calculate the slack of the non-critical path activities on those other paths. So let's come back to the identified paths through the network. Like I said, we did that in one of the previous sessions. These are the five paths through the network. So the next step is to calculate their duration. I just add the duration of the individual activities and I see that the path lengths vary from 10 up to 15. Like I said, the critical path is the longest path through the network, which is in fact the path B, E, H and J with a length of 15. All the paths may have different durations. So now we have to see what is the slack of the activities on those non-critical paths. One of the things we can conclude from this calculation and from the critical path that all the activities which are on the critical path have a slack equal to zero. And we don't have to calculate the slack of these activities anymore. So, these are in red all the activities with zero slack. And now we can start with the calculation of the slack of the remaining activities. We see here that activity A is on three different paths. And every path has a different duration. In order to calculate the slack of activity A, we have to take the path on which A is situated, which has the longest duration, which is the path A, E, H and J with a length of 13, and we have to subtract this from the critical path. So 13 subtracted from 15 gives you a slack of 2. I identified activity A. Activity A has a slack, so now I already know the slack of all the other activities A, in fact the same, but the activity A which is on different paths. Now we have to go for C, G, D and F. Now for this it's very simple because C is only situated on one path, the same for D, the same for F and the same for G. So we just have to subtract the number the duration of that path from the 
critical path. So for C and G, I will find 15 minus 11, which will be 4. For G, it's the same, of course, because they're on the same path, the same length. For D, 15 minus 10 is 5. And the last remaining activity, 15 minus 12 is 3. So, a lot of new things in this session. Another session with calculations. An important parameter, the critical path. What is the critical path about? And we're almost finishing the section 2. We still have a wrap-up session to come after this session. You did a great job. It has been hard. Session 2 up to session 14 were quite challenging, but we will have more challenging things to come later. You did a great job. See you at next session.